G'day folks, I'm Mitchell Dale. This is Rugby League Week's Friday Arvo Footy. Joined on the couch today by Martin Lenahan from Rugby League Boys. Week. Eric Groth from the Cronulla Sharks. Sensei, very zen of you, Eric. Very zen. So tonight, big game, big-ish game, I suppose. It would have been a massive game, Dogs and Manly. Uh, depleted sides, of course, Manly without Daly Cherry Evans uh, and the Dogs without their two halves and Josh Morris. So really does take the star factor away, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Look, we've spoken about this. We speak about it around every origin. We love origin. We know it's going to be a cracker, but it does knock these other games around. So Bulldogs, Manly, I think Bulldogs have suffered hugely through this period. Obviously losing their halves makes it tough. Josh Morris got hurt in the first game, hasn't played for them. He'll come back Wednesday night. So tough times for the dogs. Des Hasler has been a bit critical of the origin period and you can see why now. The dogs started the origin period in first spot. If they lose tonight, they're out of the four. So uh, it's really knocked them around. Probably probably worse than anyone. I'll be honest, as a spectator, I actually like watching these games. I know it's not ideal and coming from Des Hasler's point of view, it makes sense. He wants to get them two points no matter what. But for me, I like to see how these young blooded players and these guys who aren't in first grade regularly handle the situation. So yeah, it's kind of interesting footy for me to watch. Yeah, it does It does give young blokes a chance. I guess that's the thing about it. Yeah, I mean, I think diehard fans of clubs know these guys. They've seen them come through in under 20s or New South Wales Cup. Happy to see them get a shot. Look, I mean, as far as Desi goes, until somebody's got a better plan for origin, we're going to have to deal with what we've got. I mean, I think everybody agrees it, it knocks the comp around for, for six weeks, but nobody's found the perfect solution yet. So uh, I know Wayne Bennett said play Origin three weekends in a row. But that's never going to happen. You can't expect well, those guys to be at that how level. You, yeah, how do you feel about that? How would you, going through Origin and in a three-week period? As a player, it, it would be much better. That would be much better. It's, you, you play Wednesday night. Sometimes you've got to play on the Friday night, mate. You're absolutely just yeah. buggered. But, yeah, as from, from a spectator's point of view, it's, it's a completely different scenario. And yeah, as the game, in terms of the game and revenue and all that stuff, I can see why there's, you know, con, uh, there's conjecture about it. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see that. As a player, I'd really like to see that, standalone games. Right, quick tip for tonight, Leno. Oh, you Manly will get the money, I think. Yeah, man, I'm gonna have to tip Manly. Yeah, without the halves from the doggies, mate, they're gonna be, uh, yeah, doing their, doing tough. Yeah, well, this is a big period because I'm going to agree with you for once. Oh, oh there we go. Hey. Trifecta for Manly. Good contact. Yeah. So, <laughs> good connection note. Manly for all of us tonight. Okay, huge event for Parramatta on Wednesday night there at the Star Casino. Boys, they named the greatest player in the club's history. It was, of course, Michael Cronin. Have a listen to him. As I said, it's a little bit embarrassing and humbling, and something, but embarrassing for the fact I look at it and I, you see all the, the players that have been in this club with done a lot of things with different history, you know, so... As I said, I see it as a great honour and I'll accept it as that, but I, in some ways a bit embarrassed, yeah. I come to Parramatta and as I see, they accepted me and I was treated very well. And, um, well, I wouldn't, you know, like I came in when I was 25 and I finished when I was 35, so it was obvious I loved the club. And, um, and it was never about the money because if it had been about money, I'd have ended up elsewhere. But the people were good, the, the board were good, the players were great, you know, so, yes, yeah, the place will always be, always be my heart and, um, I still follow today, and you know, my, my, my family still follow them. But as I said, they were great to me, and that's what you, you treat people how they treat you, and I was treated very well here. Yeah, I mean, you look at the greatest player in Parramatta's history, there would have been, uh, as I said, pretty hot field. Um, Ray Price, Peter Sterling, Brett Kenny, even back to the Thornette brothers. Um, Mick Cronin, what do you reckon? Yeah, mate, mate, good on him. Champion bloke, and yeah, done so much for the club, and just one of those uh, great, great ambassadors for the Parramatta and rugby league in general. And, he played, uh, how many tests was it? 33, 33 tests, tests yeah. yeah, and scored a, a hell of a lot of uh, points for the club. And, mate, couldn't have went to anyone better. Yeah, I, I think that the thing about Mick, I mean, you look, we look at all these great athletes today, I and mean, he just, he wasn't your classic athlete, yeah. was he? He wasn't that quick, but he could put a bloke through a, a hole with an unbelievable pass, great goal kicker, heaps of point scoring records. And to beat that field of, of as you mentioned, Sterling, Kenny, growth, Junior. E. Growth Gr Senior. Growth Junior. Uh, oh, Senior. <laughs> that shouldn't have been him? Well, yeah, well, he's got enough awards. I think he could hand one over <laughs> to his son one day. The other thing that we saw was another inductee into the Hall of Fame. Again, it wasn't E. Growth Junior this time, but a bloke you know very well and played a lot of footy with, Nathan Kalis. Nathan Kalis, the best leader of a football team I've ever been involved with. Yep, just a, just a warrior, 
Never ever heard him whinge at training once. Uh, I, I used to shut up whinging when he'd walk into the room because I knew he didn't like it. Never ever, yeah, never, not one complaint. Trained harder than anyone, was there first, left last. Played his guts out every week. Couldn't have went to anyone better, mate. If you want to, if you want to uh, base your club around somebody's uh, passion, it, it would be Nathan Carter. So well done, mate. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I don't think too many people would uh, would disagree with Nathan Carter. Maybe next year, though. Yeah, you never know. Now that he's out of the picture, I'm probably a Close second, I'd well, say. So. Time's coming. Anyway, congratulations to Nathan Kalis and Mick Cronin. Okay, we're off to Leichhardt on Sunday, boys. And interestingly, two blokes at the different ends of their careers. We've got Mitchell Moses, likely to debut for the Tigers there at fullback. For the Panthers, Brent Kite, game number 300. So, uh, massive milestone for him. Of course, your mate John Morris went through the same thing a few weeks ago. Mate, I think that's a, a dying club, that. I think in today's game, I, I can't see that many more people will be you know, inducted into that family. Uh, yeah, 300 games for the NRL, that's phenomenal. And on top of that, a lot of rep representative games too, for, especially for Brent Kite. And we've seen blokes like Darren Lockyer would have played over 400 games of footy. And some of those games, the rep games, are actually harder than the NRL games. So it's just, it is phenomenal. And they're basically looked after for life in terms of you know functions and going to games and tickets for here and there. So. Oh, mate, it's awesome. I love it when you hear someone playing 300 games. There's only 19, so this will be the 20th, I'm yep. pretty sure. So um, I'm not sure there's a couple of others who aren't far off. Maybe Corey Parker. Yeah, Corey Parker's not far I think some of the Storm boys would have to be getting fairly close. Yeah, Billy Slater right. and Cameron yeah, Smith. Mitchell, I think has got about 10 to go as well. So it's amazing that we've got this period where there's so many blokes all, all set to join the 300 club. Yeah, right. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see in the next five to 10 years how many more make it. Yeah, I, to me, it seems like a bit of a dying yeah, club. Certainly a big, a big effort. And Mitchell Moses, as you said, uh, nephew of the great Benny Elias at the other end of the scale. Yeah, it just continues this production line that the Tigers have got. Of course, Mitchell Moses has been talked about as a, as a first grader for a while, much in the same vein as Luke Brooks. So it'd be very interesting to see how he goes. Playing out of position at fullback, though. That's a, that's the thing too. Like with, with this origin, when people are missing from teams, yeah, like you, you never know who you're going to blood. Like you could be blooding a future superstar who might never get their chance if this origin wasn't happening. So there's a kind of a positive side to it. And you know, things happen where they don't have a good year and they go on another club. It doesn't work out and just fade out. These future superstars that just doesn't happen. So, yeah, hopefully we see a, a bit of a freak of nature come through again. Yep. Right, boys, quick tip, Leno? Uh, no Farrah, no Woods, no Tigers, I'm afraid. Panthers for me, mate, yep. Panthers, yep, I'm on the Panthers. Oh, another mate, trifecta. Stop trying, to, stop trying to be my friend. <laughs> I don't like you. We don't get on. Don't think that this means we're yes, mates. Yes, Eric, we've heard it all before. He really does like me. Anyway, all of us, we like the Panthers for Sunday. Eric's segment, the Encouragement Award, what have you got? Eric, wake up. <sighs> Sorry boys. Mate, the Encouragement Award this week goes to the Down Under Bar in Brisbane for continually trying to derail the Queensland side and help New South Wales win the series. Last year we had the Mau Meninga incident where he poured his own beer behind the bar. Terrible. Oh. How dare you, Mal? Lock him Don't away. Lock him up, lock him up. A couple of months at least. And yeah, there's been an incident with Will Chambers. So down under bar, thanks very much, mate. You've just won us a series. And we know you uh, were born in New South Wales. Uh, it's, it's funny because a lot of time you're born in New South Wales and play in New South Wales, you, uh, you still get to play for Queensland. But you've stuck solid, mate. Good on your legend. How does a bar get born in New South Wales, Eric? Bars get born. Bars are born. Anyway, this boot's going to sit proudly in that bar. There you it's go. Encouragement award is to the down under bar, which is apparently born in New South Wales. Okay, to finish up, we've got in contact with the mole. I haven't heard from he the mole surfaced. for the show for a while. Yeah, no, but we've, uh, we've heard from him and he tells us the, uh, the betting sting that the NRL are currently investigating. Looks like there's up to 20 blokes who may get nabbed. Nothing too sinister, I've got to say. It's nothing like the Ryan Tandy incident of a few years ago. These are all sort of minor, smaller bets. The blokes having a bit of money on themselves, so nothing too major. We're looking at up to 20 blokes, so uh, may cop a, a couple of weeks suspension. At this stage, it doesn't look like there's going to be a, a massive outing. Yeah, terrible having five bucks on yourself to score first try. I mean, fair dinkum, mate. For me, this is, this is just a waste of resources, I reckon. I know we don't want match fixing. I know we don't want one day Indian cricket who's going to bowl a no ball on the next ball, have 50 grand on it. But fair dinkum, if you're putting 10 bucks on yourself to to score a try, I can't see a drama with that. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree because I think it just, op where's the line drawn then? You, you know, w w there's got to be a clear black and white line. It's just got to either be, yeah, it's okay, or no, it's not. Because if that's okay, then you just should be allowed to do anything then. And, and where, where in the future, if a bigger bet happens or, 
you know, a match fixing thing happens, they can use that as an example of, oh, why didn't they get into so yeah, much trouble? It opens Pandora's box yeah. a little bit. And I guess in the sense, if you've got money on yourself to score first try, you could be changing... Yeah, that's the, right. ...changing the outcome of a game by dummying and going yourself or something like that. Exactly. Who knows where it, where it finishes That's up, right, so. yeah. It's just too, it's too grey then. I think it needs to be black and white, unfortunately. Yeah, the actual incident itself, not a big deal. I agree with you on that one, but... Yeah, we need a uh, line there drawn in the sand. I'm out on my own, boys. I'm right. going to have a bet on first try. Right. <laughs> well, before you do that, thanks for joining us, Leno. Thanks Cheers. for joining us, Eric. Thank you for joining us at home. We'll see you again next week.